And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey folks, I'm Tom Vassell, and today I'm taking a look at one of the biggest games of 2017, Gaia Project. This was a big game because it's a sequel to Terra Mystica, which is one of the most popular games on Board Game Geek, at least. People really like Terra Mystica. I wasn't a really big fan of Terra Mystica. There's a lot of little problems I have with it, and overall it felt like a much ado about nothing. I wondered... Am I in the wrong? Now, I mean, I, I don't feel like I have to justify like l not liking a game that most people like, right? But, you know, I wondered about it. When this one came out, I'm like, okay, this is definitely a very similar game. And it's a lot very similar. I'm not going to actually talk about the differences here because it's been a long time since I played Terra Mystica. So I'll have someone else do the differential video. I'm just going to be talking about Gaia Projects. But it's space, and it looks pretty. So I gave it a whirl. And here's what I think. Before I get into the review, though, I guess I should mention that I'm going to be talking about different aspects of the game. This is not for a full rules overview. There's a lot of rules in this game. Go somewhere else if you want to learn how to play. I just want to talk about some aspects of it, kind of give you a general idea. For this is not really modular, but this is the setup for a, a two, a one and two player game, a three to four player game. You'll add some more of these in. Um, so some of them have only one side, but other ones have double sided, depending on which setup you're using. And it's going to show the different planets. There's planets of different colors, which are going to match some of the races. And then there's also dead planets on the board. Um, and then there's Gaia, these planets here, which is where the Gaia project is. You're, you're turning these planets into habitable planets. Each person is going to choose a race, and each race is going to have a special ability, and each race also has two different sides, so you're going to pick which one you want to use. Um, so you have a special ability. You also have a special building that you can build over the course of the game, and each person's special building, once they've built it, is going to be different than everyone else's. So maybe I start with these bird people here, the Hashtalis, and I'm going to fill this up with my colored pieces. And there we go. So all the pieces are placed here on the board. You have three different resources that you're keeping track of, or um, no, uh, knowledge and credit, money. You have two markers for credit. So in this, this person, this race here starts with 15. So if I got more, I would just move this one up, and I can spend either one. And they start with three, knowledge, and four, or you also have these QIC cubes, which is sort of a resource that you can use. Um, that stands for what? Quantum Intelligence Cubes. And then you have buildings. Now the buildings here are some pretty important things in this game, and I want to talk about them. You're going to be placing these buildings on the board throughout the game. Some of your actions, which is basically going to cost you the amount here. This one costs two credits and one ore to put one of these buildings out on the board. And there's other restrictions, which we'll talk about in a bit. Um, but when you put one of these out, you are going to be increasing your income. See, you're going to get income every turn. It showed this hand with the, the outstretched hand means I get one ore. If I have one of these buildings on the board, I'll get two ore. Here I get three credits. If I have two of these buildings, I get six credits, and so on and so forth. As you build these buildings, your income is going to go up, and you're going to get more of different things. However, to build the buildings, you these are the ones you build first. Some of these will already be on the board. And then you will upgrade into this, this building here. This building can be upgraded into your really big building, which gives you your special ability, and or into these science buildings, which can be upgraded over here. So it's mines to trading stations. Trading stations can go to research labs, which can then turn into academies. Or you can turn in one of these into your planetary institute. You also, above here, have your power area. These are power tokens, and many of the actions of the game require you to use power tokens. Uh, when you gain power tokens, if you have any, it, it, when you move power tokens, when you like it, fill them up, if you have any in area one, each time you get to fill one up, you'll move it to area two. Once that's full, you start moving them to area three. Once you use them from area three, you can bring them down. 
Now you can, if you want to, get rid of one period to move one here for free, but you're losing power. And many times when you get power, it's just placed right down here. You'll add more power, which you then kind of have to charge up and move over. When you do a Gaia project, you also, the power used for that Gaia project will also come back onto your board. So this is an important thing because a lot of actions will do that. In fact, on your board, you have a list of free actions, and you can see that if you have four power, you can spend it to get a science point. Or I can spend three power to get an ore, or four power to get one of those QIC things. So spending power is a useful thing. This board here keeps track of the rounds in the game. There's going to be several rounds in the game, and in each round, you're going to have these randomly put out here. There's ways to score points, like here you get four points every time you put out a new factory. And so each round, you're going to be looking at different ways to score points. You're also going to be looking at final scoring. These are final scoring tiles, and you're going to keep track of how far you get on each one. And at the end of the game, whoever's the farthest on each of these tracks is going to get 18, then 12, then 6 points. And these will both change from game to game, the order and the number, which ever of these tiles are going to come out, but there's six basically big phases in which players are going to have a lot of different actions. This is another main board that's used in the game. It's going to keep track of your points, which is how you win the game. There are some actions that you can take each turn if you can pull them off, like if I can spend seven energy, I can get three points. Or if I spend four uh, different QIC cubes, I can do these different actions down here. And then there's a the technology track. So this technology track is pretty important. You're going to have a marker that starts in each one, and you might start in one of them. So for example, you can see if I pick the birds, I'm going to start on level one of this track here. Now some tracks, like this one here, are going to increase your income. This gives me an extra two money and one um, energy that I get to charge every round. And if I move these up, and there's different ways to move them up. One of the main ways is to spend knowledge. If you move them up, your stuff's going to get better. So that you can, this one here is going to give you knowledge. Some of these let you start Gaia projects, and you get the little Gaia project tokens, and you can terraform planets. This one gives you the QIC tokens. This one lets you, when you build, build farther away than you normally would. Normally you have to build adjacent, but if you want to build farther away, and this one here is going to give you ore that you're going to get. And when you get to the very top, there's even more bone. At the end of the game, you're going to get points based on where all of these are. So the higher up you have, the top has like a super bonus for each one. And there's even going to be like a super technology tile that's at the top of each track that if you're the first one up there, you will get it. You also have the chance to get some other technology tiles throughout the game. And then when you get these, you put them in front like this one here will increase my income. This one doesn't do anything for me, but will give me an immediate seven points when I take it. This one is increases my income different ways. And some of these are tied to a specific track, which is randomly determined at the beginning of the game. And some can go with any track at the bottom. So as the game goes by, you're going to want to expand. Now, I'm a red player. I might have a factory here on this red planet, and I want to go to another planet. The problem is, is that not all planets are habitable for your species. So I'm the red planet, and I'll look here, and to there are some planets that are really going to be difficult for me to go to, like the black and the brown planets. Those are very difficult for me, while the blue and the, red pl and the, and the orange planets, those aren't so bad for me at all. Um, I'm going to have to pay a certain number of resources, which is can be determined by my technology, and so you have to terraform the planet. Basically, you're changing it to a red planet, essentially. So if I want to go there, I also have to be able to reach the planet. So to go to this purple planet, that's a dead planet, by the way. I said that the, the brown ones were dead ones. I'm sorry. It's the purple ones that are dead. I can't even get there. So I need to go here. So first of all, I need to make sure my range is able to get there. I would be building satellites to connect uh, things as time goes by. I can pay QICs to extend my range. I can also extend my range through technology. But if I want to go to this planet over over here, that's not too bad. That's not too far off from where I'm at in this world. I only need to pay one time. Of, and how much do I need to pay? Well, I look here at the technology track, and if I'm at the very bottom, I have to pay three ore to do it. But the far, farther up I move on it, I might only need to pay one every time I terraform a planet. And then I have to pay the resources for actually building the object, and I put it out. Now, you're putting out these buildings to increase your income, like I've shown you before. But you're also, as time is going to go by, you're going to want to form a federation. Once you have enough power value of buildings that are out on different planets, you are able to connect these through satellites. So let's say I have this here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. 
Okay, so I now have a federation. And you're gonna put a federation token down next to these. So little federation tokens come with the game. Federations do a lot of different things for you. They give you a federation scoring token, which can give you a lot of points and some income as time goes by. And you also, <coughs> there's other ways that federations can help you as the game goes by. But there's also just a lot of victory points that come from having these. And so you're gonna wanna form these federations as you go by. Other things you can do is you can terraform the planets, these dead planets, and use your terraforming markers to terraform them and turn them into a planet that you can habitat. There's terraforming uh, planet markers that come with the game that you'll be able to change these into beautiful living planets. And you get points for that sort of thing too. So there's really a lot of different strategies that you can take. Again, this is not a review to go over all the rules of the game. I just want to give you kind of an idea of what the game is. The game is about getting your income to go up so that you have the resources to use with your character to build these buildings out there, to build federations with them, to get points from technologies, to get points from, uh, you know, you have your own special thing that you might have to do here, to get points from terraforming planets, and to get points from accomplishing the different goals each round. After six rounds, you'll do final scoring, and whoever has the most points is the winner. The game comes with lots and lots of plastic. The buildings look really nice. You have all sorts of components. I mean, this is all the things for blue. And I really think that the board looks great. Now, I, I showed you there was these sets boards and then you change more for a number of players. You can even kind of build your own board as the game goes by. The game's gonna come with a lot of variety. It's not so easy. I think sometimes you have to read up, like, what does that mean? I have no idea. You're going to need to read on what that means and what your special other, I mean, those are the two things you need to know. And everything else in your board, there's definitely a lot of symbology. They give you your order of planets. I mean, there's a basic order of planets and how they all fit together. And the game even comes with a reference card in case you get confused over it. So if you're red, these are the planets one step away, two steps away, three steps away. The game also comes with a lot of automated stuff. I haven't played with any of this, but there's automated stuff, to, and, and you can even run with very specific, okay, I want to run against the birds as an um, automated player. So the game comes with that too. The boards are big. Now realize this is going to take up a huge chunk of space all right, on the table because you have each player board, which are that big. You have your main board. You have this technology board. And you have this board here, which is going to keep track of each round. So that's a lot of stuff going on. You're going to have a lot of pieces and things but it's a very nice looking production and the game looks absolutely beautiful when set up. Well, I think I like this game better than Terra Mystica to the point where I had a lot of fun playing it. Now, I don't think it's gonna become one of my favorite games ever, but there's a lot of things I did like about it. Although I'm gonna mention some of the things I still don't like. I, the, in Terra Mystica, there was a magic uh, thing in here, it's power cycle. I still don't like it. It just feels like a fiddly thing. Moving power from here to here, moving power from here to here, then spending power, then moving in. It's just cycle, and you've got to figure out some way to optimize this cycle, like how many power tokens do you want in there? The more you have in there, the more power you can possibly have, but it also takes you longer to charge up. I get that, and I think I would pick a race for me personally that lets me move those things faster because I find the whole process annoying, so anything that lets me move them faster is better. So I'm like, eh, on that part of the game. And also the part of the game that sometimes I'm sitting there going, okay, this is what the rounds scoring is. I need to do this now. Well, thanks for telling me that. I wasn't planning on making that part of my strategy, but I guess I'll do it. However, I think this game has lots of ways to mitigate that. I think, first of all, the races in this game are very, very unique. That's a really cool thing. Um, it's going to take a while to learn maybe each race, and the game very helpfully tells you these races are easier to play with. Great. And they all have like two special abilities, one that you have at the beginning of the game or the whole game, and the other that you have when you unlock and build their special building. So that's, that, that, that's pretty cool, that you're different than everybody else. And even though there's a lot of symbology in the game, once you play, it all starts coming together. The thing is, on your turn, you have an action. Well, what's my action going to be? Is it going to be spend some power, use like a, a worker per se to do a, one of the actions here? Is it going to be build a building on the board? Or am I going to pass? Now, one thing I didn't show you in the overview, but I think it's a pretty neat thing, and something I'm really coming around on, is when you pass, each player has a, a little uh, token that gives you some special abilities, or gives you also some resources, or maybe increases your income, or whatever. At the end of a turn, the first person to pass, there's three that haven't been picked, and they will pick one of the ones that haven't been used. 
and then they exchange theirs for that. So passing early lets you get a good pick of these tiles for next round. Or maybe it doesn't help you because maybe you're giving up the good one you had last round and someone else will have a chance to snag it. But that whole passing thing is interesting. I like how you build your income. The game is going to get bigger and more grandiose as time goes by and your techs as you move them up. And I like tech trees anyway. And this, the tech felt more important and felt more vital to the game than it did in Terra Mystica, for me anyway. Now, obviously, one thing I like is this whole space theme. The board is beautiful. Um, I know that in Terra Mystica, there were some rivers and... And here, it's like lots of rivers, essentially. All the planets are away from each other, so I have to use those cube. By the way, that, that QED or whatever that little Rubik's Cube green piece is, is one of the coolest pieces ever in a board game. Just fantastic. But that, that um, the, the, the game, is the production is just stellar. It has a very space look to it. It looks gorgeous. So I know that that influences me to some degree. But I also like, hey, terraform planets. I don't feel like doing that. Like, I've played one game. Or I didn't do any Gaia projects at all, even though it's the name of the game. And I came a whiskers breath from winning by concentrating on technology, which is something you do. Or you can just concentrate on just getting straight points by building buildings and forming federations. There's a lot of different ways to get points, and while it is at its core a point salad game, get points for this, points for this, they all kind of crisscross, and they also make sense. It makes sense to me that I build a science building and a research lab, and now I get more science in return. That's something that makes sense. And because these things make sense, though, except for that power cycle, I still don't understand that, and the terraforming planets make sense, it makes the game a lot easier to crunch in my mind. I'm not here to say that I like Terra Mystica now. I might go back and give it a whirl and see if my opinions on it have changed, but honestly, why would I? This game has better components than Terra Mystica, it has a cooler theme, it looks better presence, and they've changed some rules that I kind of like some of the changes and things that they've done. I like this one. Again, not in my favorite games, probably. But if you ask me to play, I say, okay. Now, I'll probably lose because some people are sharks at this style game. And it is the kind of game that in your first time playing, you're probably going to lose. Because, unless you're playing everyone who's a first time player, because there's a lot to look forward to. You need to look at the end game scoring in each round. Okay, that's going to happen round four. Maybe I should wait to build this here. Which tech trees are you going to move up on? You need to have these requirements before you can move to the top on a tech tree. I need to build a federation. Should I build it now? Have I built the federation too soon? I could have probably upgraded these buildings and built two federations. There's just a lot of strategy to this game. This game people are going to be gnawing over and thinking about and pondering for years, I think. But it's one that I can recommend for sure. Gaia Project. Dice Tower Judgment approved. Thanks so much for watching the Dice Tower videos. Find more great videos and reviews as well as our top-rated audio podcast at Dicetower.com. You can also find other great shows at Dicetowernetwork.com. I'm Eric Summerer, and you've been watching The Dice Tower. The Dice Tower is sponsored by Cool Stuff, Inc., where you can find great games for great prices. Cool Stuff in stock. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Shut the door.